TikTok, it was originally created by ByteDance, which was a Chinese company uh, based in Beijing. Uh, it had been um, created by uh, one of the major figures who, who was deeply involved in the world of Chinese artificial intelligence technology. Um, it, it received enormous amounts of funding from a major uh, Silicon Valley uh, investment firm, so, so Sequoia Capital, which was a company that was trying to expand in China. And it wasn't until about five years ago, six years ago, um, that TikTok was created by this company, ByteDance, through an expansion into the American market. They had acquired uh, a local company, uh, so a, a fellow Chinese company that was developing a music app that was getting popular in America called Music Lee. And uh, ByteDance decided to acquire this and used it to create what we now know as TikTok. Now here's the first big red flag, and there are many red flags, but the, the biggest red flag upon this acquisition is that TikTok did not notify the US government about the acquisition. There is a body called uh, CFIUS, which is the, the Council on Foreign Investment in the United States. This is the body that is charged with reviewing uh, all sorts of uh, you know, Chinese investments in America, not just Chinese, but uh, foreign investments in America that might pose some kind of national security risk. Um, so CFIUS has reviewed investments in semiconductors, in uh, surveillance cameras, um, you know, it, military weaponry or the components of weaponry, anything that could potentially pose a risk to the well-being of Americans, to American safety, has to go through a review by CFIUS. Now, uh, TikTok, upon entering Amer America, uh, you know, it, it had these grand plans to uh, use data. So, so TikTok is essentially a data scooping machine. It's it's getting your um, you know, your face, your voice, uh, it's, it's getting your behavior, your movements, you know, it's learning, it, it, like the, the algorithms in TikTok, and TikTok has not publicly said much about its algorithms, but um, like all social media platforms, these systems are uh, extremely profitable because they gather so much data and they use that data to sell ads to consumers. Now, the problem, the first problem here is that TikTok entered the American market trying to appeal to Gen Z, to the next generation, to the celebrities, you know, trying to build up the cat videos and the dancing videos. And this was, uh, you know, I, I believe that this was a kind of mask um, that covered up, you know, some of the, the darker realities going on underneath the surface. And that the big problem was, well, you know, this is a company that it, it, it was based in China. Uh, it, it was a company that is that will be responsive to Chinese law under request, and yet they're expanding in this massive way in America, and there wasn't even a CFIUS review at the beginning. Um, that should sound alarm bells. You know, why did TikTok decide not to do that review? And it's as if they kind of snuck into the market and placed their software in the hands of the next generation. Let me just jump in right here, okay? The fact that they didn't disclose this for review at CFIUS, doesn't that somehow create an opportunity to do a CFIUS review? Or like, what, what is the status of this right now? The, the Trump administration back in 2020 uh, initiated a CFIUS review. Donald Trump wanted to get TikTok banned. And uh, there, so, so TikTok challenged this review in court, challenged some of the decisions. The goal was going to be to probably sell TikTok to Oracle. It, this would be a forced sale. Uh, Oracle was, was lining up as the main buyer. Um, this sale never went into force, and the Biden administration stepped in later. Um, didn't completely kill the review, but but uh, for for so for the last year, TikTok has been under a CFIUS, a CFIUS review, but they have been very quiet about it. It's not clear what's going to come of it, but you know there are conversations happening between TikTok and Oracle, the American company. Uh, I can't say for sure now whether it's going to be sold to Oracle or sold to an American company, but there will be, according to TikTok, some kind of agreement with the U.S. government to um, you know to ensure that this this kind of data sharing in, in China won't be possible. That's their claim. I don't totally believe it, but we'll get into that. So there's two areas that I see are hugely problematic, maybe already be obvious to our viewers. Okay, number one is of course like every conceivable data point that this app in these you know highly sophisticated computers that we call phones have is being gathered by this app. That's number one, and this and this company is subservient to the CCP. 
and the CCP, whatever advantage it can take, we know it will. So this is not a good recipe. That's one. The second part, though, and uh, this I didn't see as much covered in your testimony, is that they also decide what you see. Yes. And, and very non-transparently. Right, and also in the realm of this, what we call ephemeral experiences. So in other, in other words, there isn't someone actually watching what is being served up to people and somehow tabulating it, it's gone forever. And we won't know what our kid or uh, you know, our uh, uh, person working in the national security establishment is seeing as they're using it. So these are, these are the two areas that jump to mind for me. Oh yes, I agree completely. One of the big problems is that uh, the TikTok algorithm does decide what you see. Uh, the, so these these algorithms with with all social media groups are uh, very opaque. You know these are these are seen as protected intellectual property. They don't want that information to leak because they say it'll damage their business. But TikTok uh, executives have admitted in the past that the the algorithm that that TikTok has been used to suppress. Um, bad news coming out of China. So they said uh, at, at one point uh, there was a, a TikTok executive who testified before the British Parliament saying that news about the Uyghurs in western China in, in the region called Xinjiang, um, that news was being suppressed at one point. There are other examples. There was a leaked uh, a, a, a kind of like a moderation guideline at one point. This was leaked uh, back in back in 2019, and it showed the um, TikTok or By ByteDance instructing the global TikTok moderators, including in America, to uh, you know look around for material that might you know look bad. So you know I anything that shows poverty, like showing ugly people. Uh, poverty, slums, you know, poor people. It literally was saying these kinds of things, and and the moderation guidelines said you need to suppress this kind of material. We only want to see beautiful people on here who who are happy and, and nice and and you know great to look at, and they're attractive and so forth. Um, you know, th this is an example of censorship and abusive censorship um, because you know not only are we discriminating against. You know, the, the poor and, and people who don't look super attractive, but it, this is also being used, it was being used to tow the party line, to suppress news about Uyghurs, to suppress news about human rights abuses in China. So, so let's jump to this other part that you've been so focused on, which is sort of the, the, the data gathering and what sort of exposure that creates. So give me the picture. So here's the problem. The Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party under Xi Jinping, has repeatedly said uh, that it wants to become a global leader in artificial intelligence, that AI is going to be a major pillar of Chinese military power, its surveillance power. Um, Xi Jinping has made it clear that he's trying to build this new society that will be driven by, by this total surveillance state, that we know everything that's going on within China, potentially outside of China too. This is where the TikTok and the ByteDance connection becomes extremely problematic because under Chinese law and under the Chinese Communist Party, you know, any any executive, you know, whether you're at TikTok, the American version, you know, of the company of the app or you're at ByteDance in China, this is the this is a Douyin, which is the the Chinese version of the app. You know, there's not going to be a separate line between those two. The Chinese Communist Party will see TikTok as fundamentally a Chinese company and one that needs to report to the Chinese Communist Party. Um, there is so the the national intelligence law of China. There's also the national security law. These are some very terrifying and totalitarian laws that require people in China to partake in intelligence operations upon request. So let's say, you know, hypothetically, and this might have happened, we, we can't say for sure because it would be all secret, but hypothetically, uh, let's say the, the Ministry of State Security uh, or the Ministry of Public Security, two very powerful bodies in China, uh, issue a demand to Chinese employees uh, of TikTok who are in, based in China to hand over the data of certain people. These could be Hong Kong dissidents. These could be uh, American military commanders. Uh, you know, it could be anybody who might be uh, of an interesting nature to the Chinese Communist Party. Those executives are required by Chinese law to hand over the data. It doesn't matter if TikTok says, and this is how TikTok responds. They always say, "We are an American company. We're separate. We're not based. In, you know, we're we're based all over the world. We're not the same as the Chinese company ByteDance." But they also admit that they have employees in China and these employees as we know are subject to the harsh and brutal realities of the Chinese Communist Party.